Double tap. Man, God is convicting me. I got to get back to cleaning that church with you. Yeah, so I would like to do it like in the morning and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. on Thursday mornings or something. Because mm -hmm. we don't go to the gym that day. Okay. Are you back live? Yeah, uh huh. We thank you, Father God. Y'all, we coming back in here. I tried to take a call and it just threw us out, but we coming back in here. We're good. We're going to get back in this room and just get back to it. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. I'm going to give people time to get back in here. Y'all go ahead and start sharing it out with some people. If you invited some people here, invite them back in. Let me know if this is blessing y'all today. We thank you, Father God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Lord, there is no one like you, God. Come on, there's no one like God. There's no one like you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are getting us unstuck. Come on, God is getting us unstuck today. God is moving us out of poverty. God is moving us out of lack. And, we, and this is not just a prayer that we're going to pray that feels good. Uh-uh. No, this is a this is a obedience that we're going to do. Come on, there's an obedience that we're going to do. A lot of times we pray and say, God, help me to get out of this financial difficulty. And God is saying, we, no, why didn't you get into financial difficulty in the first place? Sometimes you got to understand why did you get in it? Because if you can't understand why you got in that financial difficulty, the enemy can come in and bring poverty right back up again. You got to close the door to poverty because see poverty is looking for an interest into your life. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Robo Sataya. I want to read a scripture, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15, as we're waiting on people to get back in here. It says, the rich man's wealth is his strong city. And the destruction of the poor is their poverty. See, poverty is in between your ears. Where poverty at? It's in between your ears. I'm telling you right now where poverty is at. It's in between your ears. And the Bible says that the destruction of the poor is their poverty. Come on. No, you can't ask questions right now. What causes you to be destroyed is poverty. Notice what it says. The destruction of the poor is poverty. If poverty was a blessing, right? If poverty... Was what, what was what God wanted for you? Then why is it so much? Why is it that there's more people in it than not in it? I pray y'all understand what I'm trying to ask y'all. See, the enemy knows that when you are wealthy, wealthy, well, wealth is like a wall. See, that's why God had to lift the, lift the prosperity off of Job's life in order for the enemy to come in. Because see, as long as there was prosperity there, the enemy couldn't touch him. So he had to lift that off of him so the enemy could have access. See, that's why the enemy fights so hard for you to be blessed financially, for you to be prosperous. For, because see, prosperity is the ability to meet every need at any given moment. And that's why the enemy fights so hard because he knows the moment that you get out of this, he can't touch you the way that he used to could touch you. Come on. See, do, see this is my spiritual father said this this morning. He said, don't you think that if having wealth was so if having wealth was the thing that could take you away from God don't you think that the devil would have used that tactic the devil do you understand how many years he's had to study us but see he knows if I can get you worried about money though if I can get you worried about this thing 
And if I can get you to lack financially, I can get your faith. If I can get you in poverty, I can get your faith. Because remember, the enemy is coming after our belief systems. So he's like, if I can get you in a place where you're lacking financially, then I can get you to not be able to be as effective. Come on. Because now all of a sudden, because you don't have the finances, you can't move how you want to move. You can't, you can't be able to go into full-time ministry the way God may be calling you to. Now all of a sudden, because you don't have the financial resources, you can't start that business like God has called you to. Now all of a sudden, you can't fund God's house. You can't fund the work of the Lord. You can't help missionaries across the sea. Now all of a sudden, why? Because you're stuck in your struggle that you can't help anybody else's. Whew. That's why I'm, I'm so fervent about pulling people out of poverty, pulling people out of lack. Why? Because you can't help anybody out of something that has still got you entangled in bondage. So we have to break off this bondage of poverty so now we can be able to move into that place of victory. We got to break off this thing. So we can fund God's word so we can get God's word out there because listen until you have gone into full-time ministry you can you you do not understand how much it takes to to get the gospel out there it takes money to get the gospel out there it takes wealth to get the gospel out there and when you go into ministry, you start realizing, you start seeing all of the needs around you. You, you don't understand from this level because see, when you get, to, because listen, sometimes the reason why we don't understand our pastors and we don't understand the prophets and the pastors and things like that is because we have a different vantage point. But the moment that God lifts you up, you all of a sudden start seeing it differently. I can't tell you how many people write me. Pray for money, pray for money, eviction notices, repossessions. My team, my prayer team can tell you. You know how many people, that is one of the biggest prayer requests in the kingdom of God. Money, wealth, bills, debts, things like that. So now all of a sudden we can't display God's glory in the way God wants to display his glory because we're lacking because we don't have, because listen, I got to go over to this scripture because I got to remind you of what your assignment is by God and what God says that you are supposed to do. See, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, come on. Come on, listen. Oh, can I say something? She said, you don't have to be rich to glorify God. And she right. Because listen. If you would start where you are right now, God would trust you with the riches to where you can bring glory to God in a grander measure. Because every, because listen, God says we go from faith to faith, glory to glory. So you don't have to be rich, but don't dare tell me that you're supposed to be broke either. Because listen, you ain't supposed to be broke. Broke is not in your DNA. Because God wants for us to use everything he gave us to bring glory to him. So if I got, so listen, my wealth, I wanted to bring glory to God. My business flourishing the way it is, I'm bringing glory to God. Broken in our DNA. But sis, if it's not in my DNA, why am I going through it? Because somebody taught you wrong and I've come so that way we can retrain this mind. Because somebody taught you poverty. Because everybody here right now is living off of some information that was given to them. So because somebody taught you that you were supposed to lack, you lacking. Come on. And you got to understand who God has called you to be. So you can step into what he has. And listen, because I want to say something too. I don't want to just say that we are wealthy and rich even when we are not. No, because listen, I don't want words to come out of my mouth that I ain't got evidence of the fruit because the Bible says you will know them by their fruit. So we ain't just supposed to speak it. We supposed to have fruit that demonstrates it too. Your fruit should demonstrate the wealth and the riches on your life too. We ain't just out here making confessions. The Bible says in the multitude of words, there is poverty. So just to talk it is not enough. 
We can't just talk it and say, oh, I miss, uh-uh. Y'all, I got to get back on track because I'm on assignment. I got time, so I got to stay on time. Listen, the Bible says that you are to be enriched in every way. Do you hear this? Second Corinthians chapter nine, he says, you will be enriched in every way so that you may be generous. You're supposed to be enriched in every way that you can be generous. That means every area of your life is supposed to be fully supplied, fully funded. Oh, I prophesy over your life right now that you're going to be fully funded in every area of your life. Somebody say, I receive it in Jesus name. Every area of your life. You're supposed to be fully funded. You know what it takes to be the lender and not the bar in this day and time. You know what it takes to be the head and not the tail in this day and time. Come on. You can't dare sit over there and say that you called to be a lender. But confessing. Oh, well, we, we don't I don't need all that. Well, then you're not a lender. Because in order to lend, to be a lender, you need to be lending. And you can't lend what you ain't got. See, that's the thing about being a lender. Because when, you're in a, when you are a lender, you have it. The reason why we borrow is because we don't have it. So we either are lenders or borrowers. And we lend, we're lenders because we already have it. We're borrowers because we don't have it. But I've come to restore it in your life today. Come on, I've come on assignment to restore it to your life today in Jesus' name. See, he says that in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, that God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing. Notice what he said. I can make every favor and earthly blessing because some of you Christians that are lazy are waiting to get to heaven. Oh, when I get to heaven, I'll do it. How dare you that God would dare put you on this earth on assignment, that you would do something great, that you would display his glory. But instead of displaying his glory, you just trying to get home. What was the point of you leaving the house if you was in such a rush to get back home? Because God put you on this earth to be an answer to somebody's problem. But you can't be an answer because you're trying to get back instead of establishing his kingdom here. My spiritual father was teaching us. He said, the reason why somebody dies is because their assignment is done. Because there's no more for them to do. So if you're gone, it's because you are done. And some of you have already checked out early. And some of you are so spiritual. Oh, we so spiritual. We so, we so, we just so humble. We so humble, right? But you're no earthly good. Because here's the thing. Jesus was spiritual, but he still came onto this earth and fulfilled an assignment. Do you understand that in your spirituality and everything that you are, you're supposed to be on this earth fulfilling an assignment, but you're not fulfilling an assignment because God can't even get us through our day to day living. So God is because how can God how can God take us to the point where we're able to help other people when he can't even get us out of the land of being able to believe him for our own personal stuff? See, that's why God is wanting to bring you out of your own needs because God can't, do, God can't bring you to a place where you can supply other people's needs until yours is met. Notice what he said, you shall be blessed to be a blessing. So I bless you to be a blessing. I don't bless you to pay bills. I'm not blessing you to live paycheck to paycheck. No, I bless you so you can bless somebody else. I bless you so you can demonstrate my glory. But we don't want to demonstrate the glory of God. We only want to just demonstrate, oh, I pay bills. That's what I was sent here to do. That's a waste. That is a waste to have all this life, to have all these things. And the only thing that you do is just go to work, pay bills, that's all. You're not reaching nobody. Because, because you can't sit over here and say it's your pastor. Because he said, everybody go into the world and preach the gospel. Everybody has that same assignment. And you may not preach the gospel from a this vantage point, but you're going to preach that gospel from your, it may be a vantage point of your life. It may be on your job, wherever God sends you to. Notice what God says. He says, when I sent you out, you didn't lack. See, God can't send you because there's still lack. 
He said, when I sent you out, you lack nothing. But God can't send you out because you still because you're so focused on your lack. So because you're so focused on your lack, you can't be sent. Because you're distracted. Because all of a sudden now when God begins to send you, he needs your undivided attention. Because God can't have you in these streets getting tripped up. He can't have you in these streets not focused. So because that over there, you can't do what God wants you to do. So now God can't use you. We say, God, you, you everybody say, God, use me until he use you. Because see, when God begins to use you, he will, he will squeeze you like grapes. And he gonna get every ounce of glory out of everything you do. See, it says God is able to make all grace every, come on every favor and every earthly blessing come to you in abundance you know why he said it would come to you in abundance so that you would all so you may always under all circumstances regardless of the need have complete sufficiency do you hear that he says i will cause it to come to you in abundance so that no matter what need you have you will have enough and then secondly he said that you would be furnished in abundance for every charitable donation so when God blesses you in abundance, it's so that way that your needs are going to be met. But not only will your needs be met, so, but so that you would also be able to give as well. So do you understand that abundance comes to those who are givers? Abundance comes to those who have something, have an assignment. Because God doesn't just give us abundance for cuteness. So he gives us abundance because of the assignment, because money is a tool. That's why the Bible says it says money answer is all thing because money is an answer. So when we're praying for finances, we're just praying, God, give me this thing that is an answer. And, all, and money is meant to be used to be circulated and invested, that it's meant to be grown. So the moment that money comes to your hands and money is no longer being grown, you know what it does? It will go into the hands of somebody who will grow it. When money comes into your hands, it comes into your hands to be grown. And the moment you stop growing it, is the moment it leaves you and go to somebody else. See, the prodigal son, it says how a few days later, the younger son gathered together everything that he had and he traveled to a distant country and there he wasted his fortune in reckless and immoral living because he had blessing with no character. He had inheritance with no character. And he forgot where it came from. Notice, because here's the thing about an inheritance. An inheritance is something that you inherit. Meaning you didn't work for it. You didn't toil for it. It was passed down to you because somebody else worked for it. Somebody else paid the price for it. So he said, give me my inheritance. Notice when the inheritance was still in the hands of the one who worked for it, was still in the hands of the father, it was blessed. But see, the moment that he got the inheritance and he took it and he left, it's the blessing lifted off of it. See, he had the blessing, but he didn't have the mindset to handle the blessing. You ever had money, but your mindset wasn't, wasn't conditioned for it, so you spent it all and you fumbled the bag? Mm -hmm. See, so he wasted what he had been given. It said, and notice what it said. Now, when he spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country and he began to do without and be in need. Notice what happened. It said, when he spent everything on worthless stuff, a severe famine occurred in that country and he began to do without and be in need. The moment he spent everything, that's when the famine came. Because the moment he spent, anything, spent everything, there was nothing to grow. There was nothing to grow. There was nothing there anymore. There was no substance there. See, you see what happens 
When we, when you spend all your money, every time you keep spending all your money like that, you inviting poverty in. You giving poverty a doorway into your life. When all you do is every time money comes in, you spend all of it, you invite poverty into your life. Come on. And it said that after that, a severe famine came in and he began to do without and then he was in need. He began to do without and he was in need. He be, the moment there was no more money there, that's lo, the moment he spent everything, he began to do without and he was in need. Today is financial restoration day. Because I want to show you the areas where you've been inviting poverty in your life. When you spend all your money on worthless stuff, I used to do this. I go broke for wigs. I go broke for things that I wanted. And I've had to discipline myself here recently. Because every time I was literally... Every time I was spending all my money, I was inviting lack into my life. Was I, I was tithing and giving and doing all that. And you know what I did? I had to bear, I had, see when you tithe and you're doing this recklessness, you have just enough to get by. You stop tithing and you do this recklessness. You ain't gonna have enough. You have got to stop eating your money. If you're going to get to the point where you're going to be financially free, you got to stop eating your money. Every time God gives you money and you, and you spend it out, you are an eater. Because see, when the word of God comes in, you're either a sower or an eater. And if every time God gives you money, you eat it out, you know what's going to happen? Because listen, he gives seed to the sower and he multiplies his resources. He gives bread to an eater. Have you ever noticed that you can't grow bread? That the moment bread has been eaten, you can't, you, you can't, it, it, it doesn't multiply. You have enough that will supply you for the day, but it's not multiplied. But do you notice when you have seed and you sow seed, seed is multiplied? Because seed is what takes you in the overflow. Bread is what keeps you in barely getting by or drowning or surviving. So if you're drowning, surviving is because you're an eater. If you in overflow, that's because you are sower. That's because you've gotten into the investment side of things. And I'm going to tell you some of the best place you can invest your money is always in the house of God. Why? Because you're putting your seed or you're putting your money, you're putting your wealth into something that's eternal. You're putting your wealth into something that is spiritual. So you're putting your wealth into something that is always growing, that is always furthering. And because you put, because listen, the Bible talks about where you sow your money, it matters. So when you're giving, you got to look and say, where are you giving your money to? Are you giving your money into a place that is just only just giving you just, oh, well, it's going to give me something that's going to feel good, but it's not going to, but, but it's not going to give me an eternal effect. I don't want, I don't want to just put my money in temporary places. I put my money in eternal places too, because the kingdom of God is eternal. And if you only put your money in temporary places, that's why you're going to keep having temporary blessings because you got temp because you're sowing into what's temporal, but you're not sowing into what's eternal. Come on. So today is financial restoration service. And I believe God is wanting to restore your finances. I believe God is wanting to break off poverty over your life. But can I tell you that you have got to work with God to do it? You cannot say you want God to set you free financially spending all your money on stupid stuff. You cannot say that you want God to bless you financially if you don't even deem giving to God as a priority. The same measure in which you deal, it'll be measured back to you also. I'm telling you principles. See, this is where self-discipline and self-control comes in. You know why God has allowed so many problems around you? It's because he's waiting for you to raise up and get to the place where you want to be the one to solve it. See, I've been seeing so many needs of houses 
And I reached out to my, my accountability partner this morning. I said, I said, okay, listen, what do I got to do to uh, get some funding for some properties? And she said, this is, this is all you got to do. And we can get that. I said, okay. So I know that because listen, I know that God has called me to house people. I know that God has called me to own property, but see, I got to position myself for that. I got I to gotta position myself for the prayer that I'm praying. Because see, a lot of times we pray prayers, but we want, we want prayers that, that pacifies our loneliness. Not loneliness, laziness, not loneliness, laziness. We pray, but we, won't la we want to be lazy. You want God to give you property, but you're not strategically positioning yourself for the properties that you're praying for. Come on. You, you want, you see all these people around you needing jobs and God may be the very one that didn't call you to either start a business that's going to give them a job or God didn't call you to create a company that could help them to be able to write resumes to get a job. But see, here's the thing though, because you're meeting their need on a level that keeps them stuck instead of meeting their need on a level that empowers them. Because I learned this about giving. Is your giving enabling them or empowering them? Because see, sometimes we're pouring into people and all it's doing is enabling them, but it's not empowering them. That's why I told y'all I had to transition. I had to shift some stuff because I can't be enabling people. Because we called to walk in freedom and not bondage. So Father God, right now, I pray over everybody on this live today. I pray, Father God, that you would break off that spirit of poverty on their life. Break off old mindsets. Break off fear. Break off doubt. Break off unbelief. Break off every single lack mindset. Break off every single devourer in their life. See, can I tell you, I need it. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just told me to tell you this. The enablers are the devourers. Them enablers are the devourers. Those ones you've been enabling, they've been sent by the enemy to devour your blessing. Mm. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Orakaya. Eli, where's my oil of increase? God told me to do it with my oil of increase. Hold on, y'all. I got to pray with my oil today. Where my oil at? I'm like an old mama. Pull out her purse. Come on. Them people you enabling, they the ones devouring your stuffs. Come on. Y'all, I had to get, y'all, I'm like an old mama, like, get your oil out, get the oil out. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we bind it. Come on. Y'all, I got my oil of increase. Get your oil of increase out right now. Father, right now, we bind up every single spirit of witchcraft over their life. We bind up every single demonic influence in their life. We bind up every single spirit of idleness, spirit of stagnation, spirit of fear, spirit of anxiety and worry. Lord, I thank you right now, God, that you are delivering them, setting them free, God, from every single bondage on their life. Everything right now that is in their life that is keeping them in this struggle that is keeping them in poverty every door of poverty every single door of fear God right now fire fire in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you God for the fire in this room burn off every single thing that's not of you Father God we thank you Lord we thank you God that there that you're in this room right now God uprooting old mindsets uprooting old things that have been implanted into our minds uprooted right now in the name of Jesus every seed of darkness every seed of depression every seed of anxiety worry doubt God bind it in the name of Jesus oh God I thank you, Lord, that worry right now, God, is breaking off of their mind. Lord, many of them walked in here with a heaviness. They walked up in here, God, with a fears. They walked up in here with anxieties and worries. Ay, ah, ha, ha, ha. We thank you, God, that you're breaking it in the name of Jesus. Come on, we break it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. Come on, we thank you, God, that you freed us. We thank you, God, that you freed us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that whom the Son sets free is free indeed in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's offering time now. This is the time where we give. This is the time where we sow. This is the time where we, we sow our seeds. My spiritual father said this so good. He said, never sow out of your poverty. Never sow from your place of poverty. Sow from the place of the prosperity. So, for, so from a place of where God is taking you to and not from the place of where you are right now. 
Come on, God, if you heard, hear this, he says, I will not abandon a cheerful, prompt to do it giver. God is looking for some people that is prompt to give. He's looking for some people that 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 he can literally just bless financially and, and that literally have a heart to say, God, I'll do it. I'll give. God is looking for givers because he said givers are who I will not abandon. He said, I will never abandon a prompt to do a giver. Come on, I believe in God that we're going to be some prompt to do it givers. That when God tells us to release, we're just going to say, here, God, I trust you, God. Because it's yours anyway, Father. God, I thank you right now. I thank you, Jesus, right now. We're going to go into a time of giving and sowing into the word, sowing into the, what God is doing. Y'all, I'm excited because Takai Revelo Ministries is, a, is establishing It'll be all done today and stuff. We're, we're got our nonprofit done and stuff like that. And I'm excited about getting these things, getting done and stuff and how God is just working and stuff. And, and God is moving in bigger, bigger ways. And God is literally bringing the pieces together. He's bringing the pieces together in Jesus name. Now y'all are going to see my PayPal information. I love you too, my Annie. You're going to see my PayPal information, but don't give to PayPal because I don't have that account anymore. I closed it down for a reason because I don't want to deal with it no more. Thank you, Father.